Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Keago. Good morning. My name is Fatuma Sichale, Judge of Appeal and Commissioner. Karibu sana. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. My name is Charity Kisotu, a Commissioner. Karibu sana. Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Keago. Good morning. My name is Nzilani Caroline. I'm a Commissioner. Karibu. Thank you. Good morning, Mweshimio. Good morning. Oluande Evelyn, you are welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Commissioners, for that introduction. Uh, Honorable Kiango, we will shortly be engaging you on your application that you made to the Judicial Service Commission for the position of a judge of the High Court. Yes. Uh, before we delve into the interview, please confirm to us your county and your ethnicity. Thank you, Chair. My county is Kisi County. Kisi. Um, a Kisi by tribe. Uh, the first set of questions will be read by Commissioner Mashari. Uh, welcome again. Two questions to be precise. One, um, I see from your CV you had a brief stint in the private practice before joining the judiciary, where you've largely been. Now, we are looking for people who will be impactful as judges. And for them to be impactful, it must be based on the experience and achievements, rock-solid achievements that they've, they've made. Because, you know, you have to be alive to the fact that there are many applicants who are all equally good. Now, could you indicate to this Honorable Commission what you think, you know, you have in terms of uh, achievements and you demonstrate with specific examples of the achievements you've made, not on the management side, in terms of uh, decision making. Because you are looking for judges who go and determine matters. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I have served in judiciary from the year 2004 when I was appointed as a resident magistrate. And uh, all around I've been uh, making decisions uh, uh, which have gone to the Court of Appeal. And uh, most of my judgments have been confirmed. And I've been receiving feedback from the case pack mechanism. Um, uh, also, when I was in practice, uh, I did take up some matters which uh, I felt that uh, touched on the society, more particularly when I was in Bungoma. There were about three matters that I handled, uh, although I was not paid as a, a counsel for the reason that I just uh, joined practice. And I was approached in one of the cases where uh, a lady from Maraba town was arrested and placed before a Cadiz court, charged, and then uh, she was ordered to pay some damages for plastic surgery. And when I appeared before the Cadiz, she refused, he refused to give me audience, and uh, therefore I had to move to the high court uh, before then just uh, meet a and um, the proceedings were quashed and the red was set free. That's one case I remember that uh, really touched me. Um, there was another one also within Machakos where one person was charged in a criminal miscellaneous proceeding and he did enter free and pursued those proceedings. Um, the, 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 accused or purported accused moved to demolish a rental premises with the intention to affect the occupants. Uh, chair through an application to the court, although I did not succeed in um, setting aside the orders, uh, somehow I was able to forestall the process. And the only reason why I never got the orders was because that uh, I had used the wrong procedure, which I think I didn't agree with it, but I respected the decision. And subsequently, when I moved again back to the High Court for the director, um, the decision was quashed. 
a uh, fire and also motion chair. Um, for the entire period that I've been, including up to recently, that's this year, just as I said earlier on, I have already gotten about a feedback of three cases which went to the High Court and they were confirmed between January and now. These are matters that have handled, both in Baricho, Machacos, yeah, Machacos, two of them, and then uh, one in Baricho. That really demonstrates that uh, over time, I have learned and developed the capacity to be able to understand or now to deal with matters, however challenging they may be before me, and be able to come out with uh, uh, correct decisions on issues that have been placed before me. Uh, so I have a feeling that I'm qualified and competent in terms of legal practice. I have a grasp of the procedure under administrative law, which I always apply when I'm dealing with the, most of the matters that have been placed before me. But you see, Yona, somebody may also tell you that that's the ordinary, that's the ordinary expectation you know, of any judicial officer. Sure. You know, it, so, you know, you know, you have to show something that that separates you from the ordinary, something extraordinary, you know, considering the fact that there are also other applicants, and that's the bare minimum that is expected of you. Now, l let me move to this next question, which is, in your view, yes. what, how would you define an extremely good judge? Because, you know, there are those who you appoint, you'll never hear of them again. You know, they are, they are just there. But there are those who become outstanding and, you know, they make impact. So how do you define that impactful judge, the one who will be extraordinary? Uh, could you state two characteristic of, characteristics of that judge and then relate it with yourself and show that, you know, if you look at your track record, you actually become, you know, you can be categorized amongst those who are extraordinary judges. Um, thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> um, I, I expect a church to be able to do his work as a church in uh, hearing and determination of cases eh? promptly and with a lot of integrity. I admire churches who handle their matters with respect and decorum to the clients that we normally serve. And that really motivates me when you look at the reasoning, the judgment, um, the outcome, even when you consider the set of facts that were presented. So I admire such kind of churches. Eh? And um, when I relate it to myself, I have the capacity in terms of patience I'm able to hear parties without uh, any discrimination or bias and be able to make a determination regardless of the circumstances of the case. I, I, I have the stamina to be able to hear uh, difficult matters and also be able to make a determination without any fear of uh, anybody or from any quarter. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, we will continue with that line of uh, conversation yes, yes, on yes. your ability to uh, apply and interpret the law, especially the Constitution. Yes, my Lord. And I'll take you to Article 22, uh, which deals with the enforcement of the Bill of Rights. Yes, Your Ladyship. And I want you to tell me at least four of the beliefs that a court can grant under Article 22, yes. all of them. And um, Article 22, which is the Bill of Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, the court may um, divine a right which has been violated uh, by an action. Uh, what did you say? Say that again. Divine. Identify that this rights Define. Are, yes. Mm -hmm. Has been violated mm -hmm. and therefore uh, seek remedial of it. What do you call that in terms of an order of a court? Um, that will be uh, declaring that right. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Um, the court also may order for um, an injunction mm -hmm. uh, restraining a party from violation of that right of a party. Mm -hmm. uh, the court may also order some form of compensation mm -hmm. where a right has been violated. Yeah. Yes. The um, The fourth one it cannot come in immediately. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Moving on. Uh, of course, the Constitution protects uh, fundamental rights, but there are certain rights that are remitted under the Constitution. Yes, my lord. And they can be remitted also by registration. Which are those rights uh, that can be remitted? Mm. I think which cannot be remitted or remitted. Which can be remitted. I, I think we, we, we where, where somebody has been charged eh, of a criminal offence. Yeah. Uh, it is freedom to move freely can be remitted by law. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, that is not uh, particularly provided in any article. Do you know of any articles of the Constitution that remit uh, some rights? There is an article, my Lord, that I saw, but mm. it cannot, I don't know whether it's Article 23. Mm. I cannot be able to remember it precisely, but there are some which are limited. I don't know whether it's a right to life or something like that. I can't okay. remember some now. Okay, that is also not one of them, mm. so you can uh, refresh on that. Yeah, I will. Yes, which are the most prevalent uh, court cases in your jurisdiction? I gather that you are the CM in uh, Nyaururu. Yes, my lord. Yeah. Uh, in Nyaururu, that is Saraikipia County, uh, we have quite a number of uh, land cases eh? mm. originating from uh, the settlement fund trustee matters where we have. Uh, so the pre double, double predominant allocation. litigation in Nyaururu is land matters. Yes, and succession also and for us. Succession. Yes. Uh, what are the issues that are impeding uh, the progress of uh, determination of succession matters? Uh, sometimes you find it's family disagreement where parties are not able to agree, especially where the family is uh, extended, where we have more than one spouse. So sometimes they will not agree. On so what are you doing to expand uh, uh, matters in that area? Your leadership when I went to Nyaururu uh, in uh, 2023, I had just left Machakos where we had launched the court and mediation. So when I went there, I was like, there is no court and mediation. So we were able to request the registrar court and mediation, and we set up a, a registry for mediation, um, which is up and running, and they've been uh, assisting us in sorting out those cases. Huh? Number two, we in our CUC, we have been... Um, communicating through the administrators or now they can be able to assist members of the public to be able to understand the need to come to a consensus, especially on family matters, without the necessary having to fight. And uh, we have also been engaging the RSK chapter to be able to support us in terms of uh, trying to settle those matters, although still there is uh, some slight challenge. Okay. Mm. Uh, Commissioner Orwandi? Thank you, my lady. Good morning once again, Honorable Kiago. Good morning, Commissioner. Uh, I have two questions for you. Uh, to start us off, maybe you can explain to us what you understand by special damages as opposed to general damages. Commissioner, special damages, these are um, actual expenses which have been incurred, especially in running down uh, Accident, accident claims. Huh? They are special in that they have already been incurred, although sometimes they may include uh, some future medical expenses huh? as special damages. 
and general damages? General damages, uh, this will relate to the um, awards made under uh, um, where somebody has suffered injuries, which cannot be quantified immediately when the claim is being filed, but will be quantified as uh, evidence is being taken and uh, consideration of the documents which have been submitted. Okay, those damages are not usually limited to accident cases, but more or less we get what you mean. Yes. So now, there is a claim for loss of user. Yes, Commissioner. What is that claim and in what category does it fall? Uh, a claim for user will loss be of the, user. Loss of user mm -hmm. will be in the category of special damages. Huh? Uh, if, um, First of all, explain what it is and then tell us the category. Um, loss of user will apply to situations where somebody has like a vehicle which is supposed to be using for its daily operations, either business or personal use. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it's involved in an accident, it's not able to use it for that intervening period. Mm. So that will be like, he, he will now be claiming for inability to use it because of the accident. Okay. So that will be a loss of user that will be claiming for the period when the vehicle will be under repair. So in what category does it fall? I will press it under special damages, I think, it's under, because it has to be very specific. Are you sure about that? Mm. Just revisit the definition <laughs> you gave us. Or, uh, the special damages. Of, yes. What did you say special damages? I, I said these are expenses which have been incurred. Yes. So when I'm talking about of, uh, loss of use, I'm looking at a scenario where one has either hired a vehicle to use in the intervening period, then it will be a claim for the expenses incurred where using other means of transport. I'm asking this question because I was mm -hmm. looking at your sample writings. Yes, Commissioner. There is uh, the CMCC number 271 of 2017. Yes. You remember it? There is uh, a claim for loss of user where the police, uh, I think it was a malicious prosecution case. Yes, yes. The police confiscated a camera. Yes, Commissioner. I yes. do remember it now. So in that context, would you still talk of hiring a vehicle? Because the claim was that uh, he uses the camera to earn a living. To earn a living, yes, Commissioner. So is that special damages or is that general damages? I would still consider it to be special damages because that claim was like I used to earn money from photographic uh, business that I was doing, eh? Uh, okay, what is the principle uh, when it comes to special damages? When do we award special damages? Where they have been pleaded and proved specifically. How do you prove special damages specifically? Uh, by production of documents, either receipts uh, of what you incurred. Uh, so in this case, if the camera is confiscated, what, what would he be using to specifically prove the claim? Uh, Commissioner, I had expected that uh, this witness was to avail records of uh, the transactions he was doing, eh? either in terms of bank statement or payments, showing that uh, out of this business, I was earning this money. Um, and, and, and then uh, that will move it now from uh, special damages. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted us yeah. to get there. Okay, yeah. okay. That thank will move you. it from special damages. Thank you. Thank mm. you, my lady. Thank you, Honorable CJ. <coughs> uh, Your Honor, yes. I have a few questions for you. Yes, Your Lordship. Um, what was the Bangalore, Bangalore principles of, of judicial conduct? What, what, what was the, the main subject? The principles were mainly themed on what area? On judicial conduct. It's a judicial conduct on um, issues of integrity and transparency. Yes. Any other? Accountability and um, property. Mm. Yes. Independence? Yes, even independence is included. Okay. Yes. <coughs> where do you find, uh, uh, where have we codified the principles of, the Bangalore principles of judicial conduct? Where have we in Kenya, codified them? Uh, uh, Your Lordship, they are codified under the Judicial uh, Code of Conduct and also under the Constitution. Mm. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Um, now, you have heard of the principles or rather the terms 
judicial activism yes, and judicial Lord. restraint. Yes, my Lord. What are the differences between judicial activism and judicial restraint? And in, in the course of that, maybe even uh, tell us what they are about. I've heard about them. Huh? Um, and my understanding of judicial activism is uh, decisions that are going outside uh, the ordinary. Uh, what, what, what has been used before. Like, uh, I think there is a recent decision that was declaring the the government proceedings, uh, provisions of the government proceedings, either illegal or something like that, which was now allowing the execution to be done uh, against government properties. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <coughs> we are not had any decision like that before. So, so you're you talking about uh, judicial restraint uh, cases or decisions which are of, of unprecedented or unique? They are unique mm. uh, because they what? go outside the ordinary. Outside, what do you mean the outside the ordinary? Uh, I, I mean when... Uh, is, it a, is it a question of interpretation? It is a question of interpretation. So it, it was this judge's interpretation? Yes. Mm. They interpreted it, eh? but you mm. see th there was no expectation that such interpretation could uh, come out like that as mm. the way it mm. came, Commissioner. Okay, since it appears... Okay, I don't know whether the matter is subjudice. Oh, so far, I've not ever heard of an appeal. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure anyway. Mm. But what is your view? This is a, an interview. Yes. It's not a, a, an appeal. Yes. But you as a Justice uh, Kiage, Kiago, yes. Yes. if you are in the High Court, what, what, what is your view? I, I would consider the common good. Eh? Mm. Yeah, because... Um, no, the, not, not, the, not the application of the statute hmm. itself. Yeah, the, the statute and the mm. common good will come into play mm. because I'll be looking at the scenario. What are the likely consequences of uh, whatever decision we are making? What impact will it have in the society and even uh, the government? Mm. Because uh, well, if, if that decision is correct, my lord, it means that uh, tomorrow even the commissioners might be attacked by the roadside or something like that mm. uh, and uh, then frustrate any other services that may be offered by the commissioners. Okay. Yes. Uh, now go to judicial restraint. Um, judicial restraint, I will take it to mean uh, where a decision is made uh, in a way that uh, uh, is within the constitution, uh, but uh, you restrain making certain decisions because they will have a, a negative impact uh, in the society. Uh, with that I have in mind, where there are no clear provisions of the law mm. or governing that particular issue, mm. uh, then the court should be... So one is, a restraining uh, approach is one um, avoiding, avoiding, uh, or one that is conservative, right? I would think so. Mm. Mm. Okay. Is, apply, is, is, strict, is strict application of stare decisis a restraining in nature? Is it a restraining approach? Restraint of the judicial, um, uh, of, the, of the judge? No, I would think so, my lord. It, you think so? Hmm. Okay. Okay, fine. Um, um, Thank you so thank you very much. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning once again, Your Honor. Good morning, Commissioner. Thank you for welcoming us well in Yahururu when we visited okay. and uh, engaging the partners. It shows you have a very good working relationship with them. So keep up the good work. Thank you. If appointed a judge, what will be your approach to interpretation of the constitution? Um, my approach to interpretation of the constitution will be guided by um, precedents of uh, the Superior Court where certain provisions of the constitution have been uh, interpreted. I will also be guided uh, by the principles within the constitution itself, which uh, is to interpret it purposefully and for the common good. What is your understanding of purposive approach to interpretation? And you can cite a case law. 
within our jurisdiction that has expounded the same? Um, the purpose of is intended to address those issues that have been raised eh, and trying to deal with them. That's the way I would interpret it. Uh, what case comes to mind? Not one immediately, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you find there is ambiguity yes. in language of a statute, yes. what would you be expected to do? Ambiguity in language. Language, yes. Um, within a statute, yes. Within a statute. Mm -hmm. I would make a decision on that ambiguity and declare it so that it's ambiguous and it's capable of being understood and then probably uh, recommend that the same either be amended or be corrected through an incidence applic application through the legislature. So where will you go to beyond the statute? Beyond the statute? Mm -hmm. um, I think there will be also some international instruments which can uh, assist. Mm -hmm. We are talking about language, the language of a statute. The language of a statute. So it's not clear. It's not clear. There is no clarity. So there is ambiguity in a word within a statute. Mm -hmm. You are expected to go further to a particular issue to see wh how you can try to establish what uh, the intent was. Uh, I think I will do that under general interpretation. Okay. Yes. Okay. Have you had a an opportunity to review any Hansard no, from I Parliament? Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. So, if appointed as a judge, you will be assigned legal researchers yes, who will be supporting you with the research and opinions. Yes, Commissioner. At the end of the day, the decision is yours. Yes, Commissioner. How are you going to ensure you defend your decisional independence when you engage legal researchers? Um, first, Commissioner, I, I would have identified the issues uh, that uh, I would need research to be done on. So, um, their support would be on addressing that issue. So, once they put in their opinion about that issue, I will also, on my own, confirm whether it is the opinion placed and the cited decisions are in agreement with my also thinking. I, I would also have thought about it. Uh, about the issue. It will not be that uh, I will be just leaving them to them alone. So I will still be independent, but that information is supposed to assist me to come up with a decision that is independent. So maybe you can just show how you uh, have how handled a case, mm. you have said it's ready for a ruling or a judgment. Yes. So once you're done with court, how are you going to show that you're going to be independent from what the legal research researcher would have provided you with now if if uh, there be an issue that i don't agree with the legal research that has been submitted then i will go on my own so it's not binding that the researcher's opinion or finding is not binding on me okay. so i will be able to distinguish whatever that will have been submitted mm -hmm. and go with my finding Regard because I also do my own research, although there might be some challenge in time. But um, I will basically look at what they have said, my own opinion, and what I feel about the issue and any research that I would have done. So if they agree, then I will uh, uh, deliver the same. But if I don't agree, of course, I will be. Able, I think I will be able to share uh, in a way of uh, building with that. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All the best. Thank you. Um, thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable Keago. Yes, uh, my lord. For how long have you uh, now been uh, Chief Magistrate? I became Chief Magistrate in the year 2020. I think this so is my So it's about year. Four, four years? Yes. Under the station where you are currently working? Yes, Commissioner. How many magistrates work under you? We, there are four. Plus me, we shall be five. Okay. Yes. And how busy is that station? Um, it's quite busy. We we, we serve a big area, uh, up to Baringo County. You know, 
Yes. Geographical area may not be that important because you know there yeah, are some areas well, which mm. are thinly populated. Mm. But our case road is reflected in the data, my, my lord. All right. Yes. So have you been able to get um, the report of your performance from the Directorate of Performance Management? Yes, my lord, I was uh, given a copy. When did uh, you get the copy? I think sometime in the course of this week. Okay, and you looked at it? I did. You are satisfied with what is contained therein? Yes, I saw it. Um, I had a discussion with the DPOP team and they explained to me what, what it was. So the number of uh, cases, the court productivity is given as 312 cases. Yes, my lord. And uh, the resolved cases by yourself between 1st of July 2023 and 31st of December 2023 is how many cases? They were showing 222. 222? Yes. Uh, and in terms of percentage, the expected percent percentage was 20%. Yes. Uh, um, what was expected of you? I was expected to deliver at least a minimum of 20%. Uh, but uh, what? But I got 14%. Uh. 14%. Yes. And then again, your overall performance in comparison to average court performance is given at 74%. Yes. All right. I don't know whether you've been listening to the interviews that uh, we've undertaken so far, and more so as it relates to chief magistrates. Yes, my lord, I did. And uh, I don't know, again, whether you've heard that uh, some of them have actually exceeded what is expected of them. Yes, my lord. So what do we do in your case, whereby you actually fall below par in terms of the work output? Um, I, I, I internalized that report, eh? and uh, I was transferred to Nyaruru last year. And uh, when I went there... there you know, this is for the period 2021. 2021, 20 to 2023 to 2024. My, my understanding of that report is that uh, this is the first time that I'm foreign bureau in my performance. This is the first time that you are foreign bureau in terms of uh, delivery of output as an individual. So if you fall below par, we have about 100, candid we have 100 candidates yes. to interview. Yes. Uh, chief magistrates have come here and they yes. have performed exceptionally well. Yes. Now, where does that leave you? Um, that's what I wanted to explain, eh? that um, upon my transfer, there were quite a number of uh, random matters that were pending uh, before the court. And uh, for some time it took a while for proceedings to be prepared, but it's to come by for purpose of preparation of judgment. And they were not just ordinary land matters, and most of them were before my court, so it took a while. Number two, my lord, um, my transfer came while I was on leave, so uh, I still carried some more matters from my chakos that I was uh, handling. Uh, so I was running two stations at the same time, uh, which kept coming to Nyaururu that I was working on. Even with that explanation, yes, my the very minimum that one would have expected is you to get 100% and not 74%, given that other chief magistrates have actually exceeded the 100% by, by a big percentage, say, mm. of 50%. Sure. Anyway, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. And I uh, have only two questions for you, Your Honor. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, you've been in the institution of judiciary for how long? Um, I'll be 20 years come 1st of June. Okay, about 20 years. Now, would you just pick two 
principles in Article 10 and 232 of our Constitution and tell us how you have applied in your course of work. Um, and Article 10, it's uh, on the issue of uh, integrity, leadership and integrity. Uh, it's a trust authority that has been given to us as a state officers where we are required to... You sure Article 10 deals with uh, integrity, leadership and integrity? Article 10. Maybe my commissioner have missed it, but I was thinking it's under uh, Chapter 6. But um, yeah, maybe you can refresh on that. Mm. Uh, share with us how you um, how you will handle a situation where your personal belief conflicts with established law or legal precedents. And if you have a case in point, just share with us. Um, w when you sit in the judiciary, we basically apply the law that is there. Uh, my personal belief uh, in terms of faith or custom uh, will not come into play. Um, um, I, I, I have a case in point about uh, um, what we can call a special category or um, gender, the issue of uh, gender, mixed gender, which has been an issue for some time. Uh, my understanding is that we all created differently and uh, different uh, linings and approach. So um, what one thinks about his, uh, about his approach to that particular issue of uh, gender and sex really would not affect me as a, as a judicial officer in terms of administration of justice. I would just follow what the law says, uh, regardless of what I believe in. Because we all believe differently, we have different faiths, and it will have no effect. Mm -hmm. Yes. So finally, what style of leadership do you practice? Um, I'm transformative. Why? Uh, and demonstrate to us? Hmm? Um, the stations I've worked, I've worked, I'm now in my fourth station from the time I joined judiciary. Uh, whenever I've gone to the station, my approach has been to identify the areas that have a challenge and seek remedies on how to address it almost immediately so that we can be able to move uh, in such delivery. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, Moshimiwa, two questions for you. Yes, Commissioner. The first one, please demonstrate circumstances when you would use the approaches, uh, the following approaches to decision making. And uh, while at it, maybe you could tell us the merits and demerits of each. The first one is command decision making. The second one is consulting decision making. And the third one is consensus decision making. You said the command consensus? Yes, command uh, decision making, consensus, and consulting. Um. In terms of um, consulting, the issues that uh, are there for the common good, as in terms of a, a, a station, that will require that you have to consult the other, other members of your team in the station, and even stakeholders uh, on certain issues. Uh, like uh, when we were setting up the um, quota and expedition, first we had to consult with the staff within and even the RSK on how best we can be able to set it up uh, and then come up with a common ground. Although sometimes you might not agree free, but once you have a certain percentage of agreement, then you'll be able to, to move on. Um, so how do you settle on the, on the decision? On the decision. I'll weigh. Um, 
what is, what is the, the higher percentage in, okay. in that consultation? Okay. Are the majority for it or is the minority? If it's the minority, then probably you may have to consider another approach to, to what it is. Um, in terms of command, which I think is a, a rare pride, this will apply to where certain things have to be done, whether you have a choice or not. Uh, for instance, if um, you require attendance of a party in court and then it doesn't come, then you have to make a decision that this person, either he has to be arrested and availed in court, either by choice or by whatever means, that would be a decision I think I would consider to be a command that would be coming from an individual. Consensus, I, I would assume, is where now you, you build on it from the initial stages. Eh? Uh, and you agree as a team that this is the direction we are taking as a team. Uh, and that would constitute of, uh, maybe a, a full agreement with all the team players. So it will be applicable uh, especially for teamwork, team events, and uh, other activities that are for the common good. The second part of my question? Yes, Commissioner. The merits and demerits um, of each? Of each. Eh? Where you consult eh, and you're able to determine the level of agreement, uh, you have high chances of succeeding mm -hmm. yeah, uh, because it will be having the support uh, of the majority. The demerit to it is that it takes a little bit longer time to be able to reach a resolution to any issue uh, because it will involve time being taken to consult uh, and also to consider the other views that have been given. So that will require uh, some time. So there will be some little bit of delay. The same will apply to consensus because you will have to build it over time with the people that you are consulting. So in terms of uh, deme the demerits, the consensus also will require some time. But uh, where you have a consensus, then you have a, a success that is uh, almost 100% achievable because you have a grade. Uh, when it comes to command, the advantage is that somehow it will be done, but the disadvantage is that it may not be done, and therefore you run into problems. So with command, you said that uh, you issue and uh, everybody needs to follow. Yes. What if you issue that command and there's rejection? And it's not followed. As a leader, what do you do? As a leader, I will seek to establish why uh, it was not uh, combined with and see whether probably I need to change the approach and give it a different approach uh, rather than command. Is it possible to give a different approach when it's time bound? When it's a, uh, it's a decision that needs immediate action? Is it possible? Um, if it is something that uh, uh, maybe uh, that can be done by myself uh, and uh, the other parties are not ready to do it and it's time bound uh, the, the right effect is that uh, I will deal with it so that I comply with the time range but um, if it's somebody else who is supposed to do it then my approach will be to address uh, that issue why it was not done why what is the challenge and then uh, escalate it to some other quarters Okay, uh, I will take that. Now, my last question to you is regarding a report that uh, we have from yes. the Ombudsman uh, Office. Yes. Uh, it's a matter that you handled at Nyeri Law Court. Nyeri Law Court? Yes. There's a matter that is under investigation. Commissioner, from I've, Ojo? Never, I've never worked in Nyeri Law Court. That should be McCoy, I think. No. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's, it's, it's the same one. 
Let me tease him. Are you under any uh, investigation with Ojo? Not to my knowledge. I'm not okay. under any investigation on any issue. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will leave it at that. Thank you and thank all the best. Thank you, Commissioner. Right. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. And uh, thank you, Mr. Kiango, for this uh, engagement. Uh, on behalf of the Commission, we wish you well. But we always give a candidate an opportunity to ask the panel any question. Thank you, Your Ladyship. I do not have a question for the Commission, except that I want to thank the Commission for the opportunity they gave me to appear before this uh, panel for purpose of being interviewed as a judge. Uh, and two, for the opportunity that has been given to me to serve the judiciary for the period that I've been there. Um, I, I find it, it's a pressure when I make a decision that have an impact on society and the society appreciates, appreciates what I have done uh, so far. Um, I want to believe that uh, I fit the shoes of uh, the higher coding considering the number of years that I've served and the experience uh, that may be utilized in the higher coding for purpose of uh, service delivery. Thank you once more um, and we wish to encourage you to continue working hard and uh, making decisions that impact on the society positively. You are holding a position of leadership as the Chief Magistrate and uh, we wish you well. We will get in touch with you when we complete the exercise. As you know, we are evaluating 100 applicants for 24 sessions. Sure. So we wish you well and we'll get you, in touch when we complete the exercise. Thank you. Take our greetings to the people of Nyauru. I will, my lord. Have a good day. Thank you.